Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Triceratops. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The glass I'm using today, I have one rod of Efret Sage. I have a stringer of Efret Ivory. I have another stringer of Efret White. And I have a stringer of Efret Black. And that's kind of all you need for this bead, only four colors. I've also gone ahead and made a barrel. I'm gonna be using today my one inch lentil press. Uh, I like making a bigger bead, but you can certainly make this bead on the standard lentil that I don't even know what size it is, but I do like making bigger beads. So let's go ahead. I've, I've gone and I've made my starter base bead here. And what this is, is seven wraps across by two wraps high. And then in the center of the bead, I've gone ahead and made like a third wrap. So this kind of looks like a wonky little football. Uh, the reason I do this is because if you look on your press, the widest part of your press is right there in the center. So I always add an extra wrap of glass when I'm doing a lentil press in order to accommodate that wider part in the center. And I think all of you who, who use presses, you learn that certain footprints or bases of glass really help shape when you when you go press so it seems to me like every press has its unique little footprint now I'm gonna go ahead I think I'm gonna add some glass right there to that little opening that I got my football isn't so smooth there we go now I'm happy okay let's heat that up and get it in our press and hope for the best. Again, I'm gonna put it in the press and I'm gonna lightly, not heavy, lightly press down. Oh, yay, that one came out pretty good. Yeah, I like that guy. He looks all right. So let's go ahead and flash out the tool marks. I'm gonna move my press out of the way here. Now on lentils, I do kind of like to tighten up the edges a bit, straighten them out. And you see that little pucker right there at the mandrel, right there in the center? I like to get rid of that. I like to flash that out so that that's just a thin area of glass that might break off. And so I like to just flash it until it's melted in and smooth. I see some tool marks there. This edge looks a little high, but I think for the most part, yeah, that looks good. Let's, let's knock down this edge here. And just very gently knock it down so that you don't want to knock off the bead release and have that all stick in your bead. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to start putting on his little plates on, on the edges of him. And I'm going to use my same Ifret Sage. Now for those of you who've never done this technique, this technique is used to make leaves on vines, but I use it for so much more. Um, I use it for fur and feathers and scales, and it's just a great technique to learn. So I'm going to try to show it to you right now. Um, and hopefully this will work out. So when I make my little plates here, I get a little wad of glass on the end, just a little gather. You want to heat it up, push down, drag up, and cut off. And you can see it looks like a little leaf or a little plate. So let's do that again. And the first couple times, it's hard. You got to do it a few times to get the hang, but it's press down, push through, and pull up. And there we go. Press down, push through, and pull up. And it's almost like 
you're pressing down into that melted glass and pushing that water glass out to the edge of your bead. Push down, drag it through, and pull it up. Down, drag it through, and pull it off. Um, it's almost like a mantra if you just think to yourself, push down, drag it through, and pull it up. And then you'll start getting the hang of it. Again, I use this technique for like everything. Leaves, petals, what have you. Leaves, petals, fur, feathers. It's a great technique to learn. So, there we go. We've got our little plates on. I'm going to kind of go through and just tap down the little edges because they will get little balls on them and those little balls like to pop off so I'm just going to tap them down right now clean up some stuff okay let's do the eyes now on the triceratops eyes you kind of want to put them down a little bit because he has horns and we got to leave room for the horns so I'm going to go ahead and put his eyes oh maybe about a third of the way down and if you cover up the plates, that's okay. There we go. Good. And now I'm going to smush those eyes flat with my famous little press here. There, there's his little eyes. Now let's put in his pupils. Here we go. One little pupil there. One little pupil there. Yay. Now he can see. For some reason, I always put the eyes in first because, I don't know, the eyes are the windows to the soul, right? So you got to put the eyes in. All right, now we're going to make his beak. And again, this technique, I use it a lot, especially on my birds. So I'm going to show you guys what we want is to get a gather on your rod, nice and hot and then go ahead and drag it across the top then get another gather and drag it in a triangle I kind of use the center of the mandrel for my reference point drag another triangle down on the other side and then just fill it in fill in those little spots and you can build it up too you can put down like a triangle on top of your triangle just trying to get glass on there that's something we can work with okay that looks good so you can see I've got my little triangle there let's see if I can zoom in a bit there we go blobs of glass so now we're gonna shape that and I have a little dental tool here that I like to use let's go ahead and shape that little guy See if I can get you guys back in focus here. There we go. All right. I'm just going to smoosh down that triangle to start with. And then I'm just going to shape the sides. So it's just a matter of smooshing and shaping. We're going to smoosh there. The sky side looks a little lopsided. There we go. That's that's a beak that's a great beak okay let's work on this side now this side looks a little bit longer come on little beaky this guy looks he looks like he's got a little lopsided beak so you know, with all sculpture, you just got to work with it until you find your happy point. And right now, I'm finding it. It's almost there. There it is. And that looks pretty good. Oh, I like it. Oop, this one's going into his eyeball, though. All right, that to me looks like a triceratops. Oh, he's so scary. But he'll be more scary once we put on his horns. So I have my ivory, and I am going to go ahead above one eye. He has a horn. Again, 
push, don't break your rod. <laughs> push down and pull up. Smoosh it down and pull up. And there's his two horns above his head. This one, of course, isn't shaped very well, so you get out your tools, tamp them down a bit. You can even use your tweezers to kind of shape that horn into a more pointy point. You know, if a, if a piece of glass goes down in a way that you don't like, it's not a big deal. You can just pull out all your little tools and reshape and push it around until you're happy with it. Okay, he's got his horns on the top of his head. Let's give him a horn right on his beak. Push down, pull up, and there you go. <laughs> now, if you'll notice on a lot of Triceratops, they have, their little plates have little dots on the end. But before we do that, I have been thinking a lot lately about the back of the bead. And the back of the beads, sometimes they get no love. And I just feel like that's a big waste of canvas right there. And let's do something on the backs. So I have really been starting to decorate the back of my beads. And for this particular design, I'm just gonna give them like a flower plate and go ahead. And again, this is a great way to practice that technique of push it down, pull it through, lift it up, push it down, then you go on to the inside, push it down, pull it up, push it down, pull it up, making those little pointy spiky scales, plates. I don't know what they're called. And then in the center, I just put a dot. There we go. And let's press that dot down. Okay, and we're gonna press down all of our little spiky dots here. If I see anything that looks like it's sticking up, I'm gonna press it down. All right, and the final embellishment is to put the little dots on the tops of his plates, because Triceratops, that's what they have. So I'm just gonna go around and in between each plate, I'm gonna put a little ivory dot. And I'll start on the outside. Try to put them in between each plate. There we go. And then we've got these plates on the inside that need some love. So let's put them on the inside. There we go. And of course in the center where I put my center dot, I'm gonna put one too. Cool. And with all of my dots, I always press them flat so that there's no undercuts, that they won't pop off. Make sure they're melted in. Yay. Yay. Cool. All right, and I see one dot at the top of his head that needs some love. Awesome, you guys. And there he is, my scary little Triceratops. Hope you liked him. Thanks. Okay, before I go, I just wanted to show you guys some variations. Um, if fret sage can get a little bit on the expensive side, so you don't have to make a gray or a sage triceratops. I made an orange triceratops, which is kind of cute. And I made a pea green triceratops. And I even made a pink triceratops with rainbow plates. So switch it up, see what you like and have fun. Thanks guys for hanging with me. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.